Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Saber Metrics video tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, definitely stop and go watch it. There's a link above. Otherwise, you'll be really confused because in that part of the tutorial, I showed you how to get all your tools and explained all the basics behind performing different calculations and issuing queries and all that. And on top of this just being a basic Saber Metrics tutorial, this is also what I would consider to be a fun SQL tutorial because I've been getting a lot of requests for that. Like I said, I like to have my SQL part of my terminal on the left hand side of my screen and then a basic text editor on the right hand side of the screen and that way I can perform different calculations keep everything nice and organized well just like before in this situation I'm going to calculate the top 50 players in regards to RBIs runs batted in and just like before we're going to ask the database for certain information and you do that by typing in select and then I'm going to say b dot player ID because I want to get the player ID. And here's a new thing you haven't seen before. It's called concat, which stands for concatenate. And what this just simply does is it allows you to join different types of data together and present them all at one time. So in this situation, I am going to combine the first, put a space, and then I'm going to put my last name. Actually, it is name last. And then I'm going to also say that I want it to have an alias of name, right like that. And then I'm going to get some other additional information. Now, if I have a whole bunch of players in a table and I want to get their RBIs for each individual year and add them all together, just like previously, I'm going to have to use sum and I'm going to type in RBI and I want to display that as RBI. If I don't have this part in here, it's going to display or have the title of the column be this long thing. So that's the reason why I'm putting RBI in there. And then I need to come in here and say, where do I want to pull this information from? Well, I want to pull it from two different tables, one being batting, and I want it to have an abbreviation of B so I can use that later on. And then master is the other table. And very often whenever I'm doing these calculations, I want to use the master table in those situations in which I need to get at information that's not in the batting table, such as name first and name last, or last name and first name. Then I need to have some stipulations in here since I'm joining these two tables together. And what I'm going to say is I want the RBIs and I want to make sure that the player IDs in both of my tables are the same for all the information that it gives me. And then I want to say that I want to group everything by player ID and then I want to order them by RBI. So everything's going to be in descending order. And that's highest to lowest. And I want to limit my results to just 50 of those. Now I can easily come over here and copy this, paste it in the left side of the screen, and get my results. And there you can see, we have way up here at the top of the screen, Hank Aaron with 2,297 total RBIs, and then Babe Ruth and da-da-da-da-da. So that's a real simple way of pulling those statistics together, and you could see all of that data. And of course, you could pull in a lot more information. Now, since I have my text editor over here, I can perform a couple other different calculations while just changing a couple different things. So let's say I wanted to find out who has the most home runs. And I know this isn't normal sabermetric sort of formulas, but I wanted to start off simple here. If I want to get home runs instead of RBIs, I just type in HR and all of the code, everything I type basically in this tutorial is available underneath the video. So just look for that. I'm going to be pulling all this information from the same two tables and everything else here basically is going to be the same except I need to change this to home runs. And then I can just copy this guy right here, paste it over here, and then get a listing of the top home run hitters in Major League history. And there they are. There are all the top home run hitters all listed out there on the screen. That's also very, very neat. So let's say I wanted to get the top batting averages. Just again, because I have the text editor here, I can make just a couple little changes. And I'm also going to get at bats. Let's just come in here. Let's get rid of this all together. And in this situation, I'm just going to say sum. I'm going to say that I want to get at bats. And I want to display that as at bats. And then I also want to get the average. Well, how I'm going to do that is go sum and then put in here hits, and then divide it by some at-bats. And then I want to say that I want to display that as average. And I can leave pretty much everything else here the same, except again, I'm going to have to change order by to average. And because I am calculating averages, I want to push out those people that maybe only had like five at-bats in the major leagues and so forth, because that might distort dramatically my numbers here. And if I want to do that, here's another new SQL tool, I can type in having at bats, which comes from this guy right here, greater than 
1,000. So that's going to help me eliminate any like major distortions in this number. And also another thing, if you would want to put a comment in here, makes sure over 1,000. That is how you would put a comment inside of MySQL. And then we can copy this and find out who had the greatest batting averages of all time. And as you can tell, this comment did not in any way mess up anything we have going on here. And there you can see, we scroll up, Ty Cobb had the greatest batting average of all time, and Russ Barnes, and da 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 There's a whole bunch of additional information you could pull inside of here. So now let's get into something that's a more cybermetric-y type of thing. Being on base percentage, which is basically how often a player gets on base. Real, real simple stuff. Let's jump back into our little text editor here. I'm going to leave at bats in here also, and I'm also going to leave average in here. This is going to allow us to perform a little bit more interesting calculations. Change this to on base percentage. And then we need to come in here and actually figure out on base percentage. On base percentage is basically going to be hits plus balls plus hit by pitch divided by at bats plus balls plus hit by pitch plus sacrifice fly. Now sacrifice fly is going to be a little bit weird because if we're looking at old time baseball statistics they were unable or they didn't actually keep track of sacrifice flies. So how do you use this information in some situations but don't use it in other situations? Well there is another nice little SQL function that's available called coalesce. And in this situation, if we wanted to use the sacrifice fly information if it exists, but in those situations in which it does not exist, we wanted to say use zero, that is exactly how that you'd be able to do that. Now, the only problem is this is going to calculate everything on a year to year basis. So what does that mean? That means I need to come in here and sum all of these different individual parts. So I'm just going to come in here like that. And let's shoot this out here a little bit, make sure we don't make any errors. Sum. And then down here and coalesce, paste the sum inside of there. Come down here and close off this bracket. And then we're going to say that we want this to be on base percentage. And just with those couple changes, we're now going to be able to calculate who had the best on base percentage in Major League Baseball history. So let's just paste that in there, hit enter. And I had a little bit of an error, no problem, because I see what it is. Right here after average, I have to make sure I put a comma inside of there. So that's good. That's another good reason to have this text editor right here. Come back in, paste, and now I can see that it's working. Now it's going to give me a whole ton of information. Basing everything on on-base percentage, you can see here Ted Williams had the greatest on-base percentage of any Major League Baseball player. And we're also able to see his total at-bats as well as his total batting average. Just kind of neat, all that information there all on the screen all at one time. Now something else that would be kind of neat is if we could get this information plus we could get the position for the player. That's simple. In this situation right after this guy, we're going to make sure we put a comma inside of there. And we're going to say F dot POS, and I'm going to say as POS. We're just going to pull in another table full of information. And the reason why we have this is because the position for the player is not available in either the table batting or the table master. So then we're going to like this, and then we're going to type in fielding followed by the letter F, and then we have to put in a couple more constraints here because we just pulled in another table. And the constraints that we're going to do here is that B player ID is equal to F dot player ID. And that's going to make sure that everything matches up inside of there. We're still going to group everything by player ID. We're still going to make sure that our at-bats is over a thousand. And we're still going to order by on base percentage. Now, yeah. copy that, bounce over here, paste it in, hit enter. And there you go. Now you're going to be able to see all of this additional information as well as what position. And of course, they pull out the very first position. That's the reason why Babe Ruth is listed as a pitcher here. But you could go in there and play around with the different position types and be able to pull in their last position or show how to shoot out all the different positions they've ever played. So you could use something like this to figure out what is the greatest baseball lineup in history. And of course, you could also change the year-by-year -year information to figure out what are the best players based off of position for any individual year or any decade or anything. So that's also kind of neat. And also, check out here at C, it took 50.9 seconds. We did a lot of calculations here. You have to know that sometimes you're going to have to wait for these queries to issue out everything that you would like to take a look at. And just so you know, if you wanted to see what the fielding table would look like, there you go. So that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to understand what types of information is in all the different tables so you know what information that you're able to access and then pull all that information out because there is a ton, a ton, a ton of information. And then here is the master table. You can see all the different things that are available there. So, so that's really, really neat as well. Another thing that's kind of cool, let me just clean this back here. 
is let's say we wanted to do yearly. So that means what we're going to do is we're going to look for which player in each year had the best on-base percentage year over year. How would you be able to do that? It's actually going to be pretty simple. Basically, what you're going to do is, I could actually have calculated this before, you're just going to have to come in here and eliminate all of these sums and bracket off the division here just to make sure that that goes through right. So just getting rid of all the different sums and all of these sums, because remember, sum is going to calculate all of their at-bats or all of their walks, and we don't want all that. We just want a year by year. And also on top of that, I'm gonna pull in some additional information. So I'm gonna throw a comma in here. And let's say that I also wanna pull in salary. Well, I'm just gonna type in S, salary. And then I'm also gonna come in here and go B, and I'm also going to pull in the year ID. So I'm pulling in a new thing from a new table. So that means I need to point at the salaries table. And that's going to mean that I need to put in some new clauses inside here. This one's still going to be good. This one's still going to be good here as well. Go down to the next page. I'm also going to go and I'm going to go B dot year ID. And let's say that I want to look at 2010 data. And I'm going to say that S player ID is equal to B dot player ID and S dot year ID is equal to B dot year ID. So I'm just matching up all those different tables so that everything is pulled in properly. And then now I'm not working on historical information. So I'm just going to change this to 300 instead of a thousand. But everything else I'm basically going to leave exactly the same. Let's copy that, throw it over here and see what happens. And there you can see. Now we got a whole bunch more information. Not only this is all 2010 data, we got our averages, we have our own base percentage, we have our position, we also have our salaries. You can see who is really a great player based off of their overall salaries. So play around with that, it's kind of neat. And then I'm going to do one more here for you. This is going to be slugging percentage, which is the overall measure of a power of a hitter. And because we have everything here, this is going to be pretty easy to do. Pull this over here. And I'm going to get rid of this on base calculation here to simplify things a little bit. And then we're going to calculate slugging percentage. And we're going to do that by going in here and going sum. And we're going to get our hits plus sum. And we're going to get our doubles. And then multiply that times two plus sum. And we're going to get our triples. Multiply those times three. And then sum. You can see that it's going to weight home runs and doubles and triples more than singles. Hence power. And then we're going to divide those by sum at bats. And then we're going to give it SLG as an alias. And in this situation, I'm just going to get rid of salary. Also get rid of year. So I don't need the salaries table. And I'm also not going to need this additional information that's down here. We're going to continue to group by player ID. I'm going to say that I want my at bats to be 1000. And then I'm going to order everything based off of slugging percentage. And if we copy this guy, bounce over here, paste that in. And there you can see all of my players are now based off of slugging percentage. And you can see Babe Ruth ranks number one again. And there's the position listed as pitcher. And there's all these other additional players throughout the history of baseball. So there is a bunch of new ways to play around with all of this data. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover theoretical team runs created, batting average on balls in play, and a whole bunch of other really neat, intricate little types of formulas that you can run here. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.